I'm Candice Fax Friesen with Investor Smarts Money and the Entrepreneurial Spirit. And today we have Eric Music with us. So welcome here and thanks so much for joining us. Hey, this is my pleasure, Candice. Thanks for having me on. You betcha. And uh, I wanted to have you on for quite a while already, but I love what you're doing with the subscription box and being in that industry. And it's something that I think a lot of people don't know that much about or how big it really is. Uh, so thanks so much again for, um, for joining us and just sharing your knowledge about that industry. So uh, let's start with kind of where you began as an entrepreneur and how you got into this field. Yeah, thanks. Thanks again for having me. Like, this is an interesting story for me. Like, subscription boxes is kind of a niche thing, right? Like, I think people, but it's a huge niche now. Like, uh, when I even started the podcast, which I, you know, I have, yeah. uh, it's, it's one of those things where I, I, I thought I was going to really niche down with this podcast on subscription boxes, but it turns out it's a massive industry and it's just growing. But I'm going to backtrack a little bit. We'll talk about kind of my journey there. So I'm a little bit different than most of the, um, your typical entrepreneur. I guess I did not grow up with an entrepreneurial itch. I yeah. would have been happy working a nine to five and just kind of climbing a corporate ladder, whether it's in a trade or working for a sports team. I'm big into sports, those kind of things. I think that would have been my ultimate goal. So I just kind of like Breeze through, breeze through school, not really trying. I know I was one of those B, C students yeah. um, without trying. And I'm not saying that to brag. It's just I, I never liked school, to be honest. So I finished high school and I decided to go to college, take my university one, just hoping that would kind of figure, help me figure things out. I wanted to be an athletic therapist because I wanted to really work for an NHL team or some kind of sports team. Yeah. But then I found out there was way too much uh, science and, and math and all those things in there. So I, I bailed on that and actually bailed after university one completely from, from college. Yeah. And I just decided to go do what I do, what I knew best. I grew up on a farm in Southeast Manitoba. And, um, I, I just, that's what I knew. So I went back and I actually worked on the farm for three years. And uh, during that time I was introduced to an MLM. Um, it was called quick start. And I, I had never growing up on a small, you know, small town, about 150 people. I never heard of an MLM. I didn't know about any of these books, but I was introduced to things. So long story short, the MLM did not work out for me, but I was introduced to a mindset change. Mm -hmm. and on self-development. I was introduced to the magic, magic of thinking big, um, how to win friends and influence people, those kind of books. And uh, that blew my mind. So I, I, I just really consumed a lot of this stuff and I continued to do so. But during that time, I also, because of the MLM, met a, a friend of mine uh, who introduced me to shock communications. So this is going back, I'm going to date myself, but this is going back to about 2004. I got into working with Shaw and I stayed there for the next 15 years. So, uh, and I kind of lost the love of the dream of, you know, doing something bigger for myself during that time. I kind of mm -hmm. fell into a, not a rut, but you know, you get comfortable doing a job and yep. I was making pretty good income. I was, I was working for myself from home. I was working as a peace worker and the money was good. Uh, got into making the last 10 years there about six figures annually. So my wife was able to stay home. We, we built our dream house. Everything was good, except um, I was not happy. So I, I, I still kind of had this thing in the back of my mind where I, I never wanted to be that, 80, 90 year old man lying in bed, having a, some kind of regret that I yeah. just coasted through life because the, it, the job paid well or whatever. Yet I'm not very entrepreneurial naturally. So I'm like, I just like to consume some, get back into these books again and try to figure something out while I was working. Mm -hmm. So uh, luck would have it. I was kind of getting very unhappy with my work and stuff, but 18 months ago, oh, sorry, this will be two years ago. This is where I was recording this. We're in September of 2020. Uh, roughly 2018, summers in 2018, uh, Shaw, at the time we were about 14,000 people, they offered half the company a voluntary departure program, which is a buyout. Mm -hmm. So we could take it or leave it, um, but it was kind of a risk to stay if you were going to take it. That's how they presented it anyway. So we just, I decided to take it. It took me all about one minute to figure it out. I'm like, this is my chance. <laughs> but the, yeah, because this was my chance. You know, they the only actually gave us, I think, 10 days, which is crazy because yeah. this is a life altering thing, right? I'd been yeah. there for, at the time, 14 years. But um, I talked to Christine, my wife, and I said, Christine, like, I think I got to do this. This is my chance. I've been unhappy. Um, just the mundane, you know, going to the job I don't like to do, yeah. uh, working for someone. They were great to work for. It's just, it's not, something I was passionate about. I want to do something. I want to wake up passionate about doing something, something I'm super excited to wake up to and, and do yeah. for myself. So I took the buyout and they prorated it 18 months. So it was a kind of like a perfect storm. It gave me 18 months to plan for what wow. I was going to do after life at Shaw. So now I know I got 18 months left. 
which my, my anniversary just came September 13th, 2019. That was my last day at Shaw. So that just, just passed a couple of days ago as we're recording this. And, um, we decided we wanted, we, what drew us was Dragon's Den of all things. So uh-huh. Dragon's Den, uh, there was Olivia Canlis and she's the founder of Meow Box. And that was a subscription box. And we watched a lot of this stuff, this entrepreneurial stuff. Yeah. And it really, um, I'm like, man, this subscription is interesting because acquiring customers is expensive and you always talk about their numbers. But once you acquire it, I love the subscription factor where you can keep the customer on board. You acquire the customer once, nurture that customer, and then your lifetime value, your LTV, um, you just have to kind of nurture that, keep giving value, and hopefully you keep the customer on board. Yes, there's going to be churn and all that, but the point of the whole thing is that the subscription model was really fascinating to us. Yeah. So we ended up having a fourth. So we have four kids. Mm -hmm. We ended up having baby number four, go to the hospital. And we're looking for like a subscription box for like new moms or for pregnancies. And there are boxes out there, but there was nothing really that kind of like was really what we wanted. We're super eco-friendly people. We like recycling. We're deep into the green space, that that kind of thing. And there was really nothing catered for the eco-friendly mom that had high quality products catered for that birth experience yeah and i like bubble off to christine she's the one who's like oh my goodness we're gonna start a subscription box for expecting moms and for that yeah. first year we'll just kind of we'll package some products and it'll be perfect so that was our idea and that's how it came to be and so i knew i needed to do some work now because i'm like i said before i'm not naturally entrepreneurial so i i, I dug my heels into some books and some masterminds and i invested in myself and invested in a lot of books but eventually invested in a coach yeah. I can you know, start a podcast on this thing and learn some more. And to me, I, so I love podcasts. I, this is my favorite medium. I don't listen to podcasts for entertainment. I listen to podcasts to learn. Yes. So I was, I was scouring the you know, Spotify and iTunes for, for the, the subscription box podcasts. And there was not much, there was a couple, but they were very inconsistent. There was maybe 12 episodes on one, yeah. uh, five episodes on the other. I'm like, what is this? So I'm like, my light bulb went off. I'm like, I'm going <laughs> to, Start a podcast for subscription boxes. I know nothing that much about subscription boxes, but I'm going to interview the top subscription box entrepreneurs around the world. Yeah. And I'm going to be the conduit to help those. I'm going to learn, A, learn from them. Mm-hmm. And then my, my audience will learn from them as well. So that's how that came to be. And um, now fast forward to this year, we have, um, we have a top rated podcast on iTunes, which is the subscription box show. And uh, we have a great subscription box company called Louie and Leia. And things are, things are going great. So I know that was a long-winded answer to my journey. But that's kind of... <laughs> no, that's awesome. Yeah, that's the journey to where I am today now. So did your wife have any... Um, did Christine have any um, entrepreneurial background? Or, you know, when you said, I'm quitting my corporate job, she was like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> you How know what? She, yeah, she, she was very supportive from the start. She knew I was very unhappy. Like the last probably five years at Shaw... I was yeah. just kind of like a walking zombie, more or less like doing the job because I had to do it because again, we have four kids. We've got this, this new home that we built. So yeah. I knew I had to, I knew I had to support the family. Christine's background is graphic design. Actually, she's a fantastic graphic oh. designer. Um, she spent four years at Red River and she's got a, she's a great graphic designer. So she was doing freelance from home. Um, after baby number two, she decided to stay at home just because of the daycare. It didn't make sense. Yeah. And she's able to work from home anyways mm-hmm. with what she does. So um, yeah, but she was always entrepreneurial in the sense that she was never scared to start. She started a wedding rental business. She helped a friend start a sign business. Her dad had a, her his own business. So she grew up in that, like, that was no big deal being working right. for yourself. And she was never scared of that. Whereas I was more risk avert. And yeah. I was, uh, I was the one that this was going to take, a, it would take something big like the bio to just snap me out of it yeah. because I wouldn't have had the, um, the oomph to, to just probably leave it. Otherwise I was waiting for something and mm-hmm. um, luckily it happened because I'd probably still be there otherwise, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's common. Like I, I often refer back to like when low and windows um, had a massive layoff quite a few years ago, it was probably about eight years ago. And it was the same thing. Like there was tons of people who suddenly started businesses after, because if Mm. you don't have that, that defining moment, whatever that is, it's different for everybody, but often it takes that to then push you. And I think sometimes people start businesses on the side, which, you know, that's fine to do it, but it's actually a lot harder or it takes a lot longer to get going because you don't have that dedication and you do, you don't push as hard. As when the fire is under you and you have to make this work. <laughs> You're, that's so true. And um, time, 
is, was the biggest enemy. You know, yeah. people use the excuse, how do you guys find the time? You know, you got a podcast, you got the subscription box, you got four kids and the sports and the schooling. And we're homeschooling now too, by the way, with COVID happening, we decided to keep them home this year. So just to add some more, just in case we didn't have enough time, now we why really not? don't have any time. Yeah, why yeah. not add something else? But I think it's just, um, yeah, sometimes it takes something to kind of knock you out of your comfort zone. And um, that's what it took for me. Some people can do it without. I think I was on the right track. I was, like I said, I was really consuming a lot of, of good um, self-development stuff. Mm-hmm. But I think the problem with that too, sometimes people become self-development junkies to a certain degree. They, yeah. they almost get addicted to that part. Yeah, and, I need and that keeps book. them, yeah. yeah, just the next book. I'm going to take that next course. And I'm just, they just keep working on themselves because they, they're scared to take that leap of mm-hmm. faith that it takes. And you need to take eventually some form of action. And that's why I love action quotes. <laughs> I have them on my show the whole, all the time because it takes, it takes eventually action to get moving yeah. in that direction. You've got to take some kind of form of risk, whether it's risk of embarrassment that you fail. Um, but even then, I think if you don't really fail, do you? Like, I think you, you could learn something from it because yeah. sure, you, your business venture might not work the first time, but that might, you might learn something that the next time you want to start something, you take mm-hmm. that lesson and you apply it, right? Yeah, or you, or you make a connection and that's the person that you needed to be able to get into a different venture or somebody presents a different opportunity to you and it's just a journey, right? Yeah, yeah. And I love what you said with the connection with someone because the, the first podcast that I fell in love with it's called build your network. And that's what it was all about is how to build your circle because being in rural Manitoba here, right? Um, there's not much when in a, in the subscription space. So I knew I needed to get connected. Yeah. So one of the first things I did is I invested in a mastermind. I, I really consumed a lot of his podcast. I took his course, um, through his podcast and I eventually went into his mastermind. And, um, I'm not too sure if you talk about masterminds on your show and stuff, but uh, that was a huge thing because there I made a ton of connections yeah. and eventually, uh, went to Vegas a bunch of times for some courses and some functions and really grew my connection. And that kind of is what everything just kind of took off from there. Right. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, So tell me about your product specifically. Have you had any really cool feedback from the subscription boxes or is it mostly people buying these for new moms as gifts or people buying for themselves or what does your business look like? Yeah. So our target demographic is pregnant women. That's who we, we target. It's yeah. not necessarily for uh, the pregnant, but it's to get them prepared. So uh, the first thing I always like to say is that we offer a ton of free resources. Um, if anything, we don't really care if the mom uh, doesn't buy anything. Like we, we'd love for you to buy stuff, but it's not about that. Like we, can't, we felt so unprepared for so many of the births, especially the fourth one. We're like, this is our fourth one. How do we still not know this stuff? Like this is nuts. Yeah. So Christine and I uh, invested a lot into um I guess putting together some some ebooks or some some lead magnets if you if you want to look at it on the on the digital marketing side of things. But yeah. it, it's it's resources that are free. So you just go and you download. And it's like for example, one of them is called Forty Questions uh, you, you Should Ask Yourself Before Having Your Baby. Um, the one birth secret every mom needs to know. There's a just there's a ton of them on there, and it's just things that every mom should know that we didn't know unless we physically researched it. Yeah. But the pro- even the problem with researching it is that there's so many different takes online who do you trust which is the right one Mm -hmm. so um actually the fact that christine went through three different midwives she she really um bounced a lot of the ideas off midwives too and they helped Mm -hmm. a lot with the content doulas those kind of resources so getting the trusted resources from trusted trusted sources i should say is what helped put those together um to really pack the most valuable information we can so that's something we offer is the free resources just to help the moms know how to get prepared, have a birth plan the right way, those kind of things. And then we offer products with that so that they can help them, you know, feel more comfortable at the hospital with products and stuff. So we have products for the birth experience itself, um, delivery, and then up to the first year. So that's where our expertise is, is from birth to birthday, which is why our tagline is that. So we have what we call milestone boxes. So you have quarterly subscriptions where it's, so you have when the subscription box industry monthly or quarterly, yep. sometimes we'll call it seasonal. Ours are quarterly. So you have your zero to three, three to six, six to nine, and our birthday box, which is the nine to 12. Nice. Well, and there's so many cool things that um, are out there and you probably be, because you're in that industry are always seeing different things, right? But you know, you can just have like an example that I saw recently for school age kids, just to bring this as perspective is there's, you get a t-shirt and every year you put a new handprint on the back. So it's grade one, grade two, and you've got this t-shirt, right? And I thought, yeah, cool concept, but you have to 
hear these things at the right time. So I'm sure that there's all kinds of cool ideas you guys are coming across all the time that you can introduce to people at the right time when they need it, right? Yeah, that's the thing. And if you want to talk marketing, that's the biggest challenge when people say, what's the biggest challenge when it comes to subscription boxes? Well, you could argue shipping is because your people find out quickly you're not in the um, sh- subscription box business or in the shipping business. Yeah. <laughs> because depending on your, the size of your boxes, the weight and stuff, um, logistics, especially with COVID, that's been a big um, a big problem is, is getting the products here on time and then even right. delivering them. Uh, we ship to Canada and the US. Mm-hmm. So our boxes, um, sometimes we'll get an email like, where's my box? You know, that's the kind of like typical email because it's been, um, it's just the delay is on that. Yeah. But the other thing I'd say is, is finding that target market, right? Like how do you, how do you find your ideal customer avatar in that noisy internet world, right? Like it's such right. a, it's so crazy whether you're trying to a Facebook ads, Instagram, those mm-hmm. things, and try to get the attention of your ideal customer. Mm-hmm. It's tough because you're competing against some very big players. So your marketing dollar doesn't go very far. So you got to get creative, you have good copy. So yeah. lately we've been investing a lot in copy yeah. uh, and proper, uh, proper copywriters uh, to help us along to really kind of grab that attention because it's, that's, that's probably for us right now, that's the biggest challenge is getting in front of that pregnant mom. Yeah. And are you doing, uh, connecting with people outside of the online world too? Are you connecting with different suppliers and different people that would have sort of a similar or doulas, let's say a uh, similar type of market where you could kind of latch on and sell the boxes that way? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. The, the um, right now it's mostly all digital. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're, you know, we're doing affiliate programs. Uh, we're doing Facebook ads, obviously. Yeah. We're, we're doing influencers. So whether it's YouTube, Instagram, unboxings, yeah. those kind of things. So a lot of that is, is happening in our world. We're trying to grow organically as well with certain ways you can do that is through, um, we're going to be starting a Facebook group shortly. And I know that might tie into a few a question later on, but, uh, but right now I'd say it's mostly digital. Um, we do apply from when there was actual, um, functions or whatnot you know we did apply for a couple of those we were supposed to be going to one in minneapolis called the prego expo those kind of things right yeah more in person you can get it right in front of your ideal customer after there was one in dallas one in minneapolis we wanted to mm-hmm. attend um third and bird locally those kind okay. of things but other than that no we're like we haven't approached and it's it's a great point because we have been told more than once you should you should go to the hospitals and i think in, i don't know how it would work in canada in the states certainly they're private entities so i think you can um you could maybe have a, a more leverage to, uh, to promote your, your product there. Mm-hmm. If you have an in with a doctor, a nurse, a doula, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And um, has anyone commented or have you got feedback from, you know, I always think the, the first year is so difficult or as a mom, you feel so alone sort of, even if you have all these people around you, but your life has changed so dramatically, right? If you're going from working, yeah, corporate job to suddenly you're sitting at home in your pajamas all the time and you, you know, you're not used to getting together with moms and this is a whole new world. You know, it can be a very lonely thing. And I think subscription boxes are just such a great way to even just build up a mom, right? And you can put so much encouraging stuff in there to just have that boost whenever you get that box. It's yes, it's about the baby and about being a mom, but also just building up um, that woman as, as an individual and in this new role that women find themselves in and whether that's postpartum or just the change that you have in your life, right? A big dramatic change. So have you gotten any feedback like that at all? From yeah. F- yeah, for sure. Not so much feedback, but we, we, some, it's something Christine for sure was aware of being a mom of four. Yeah. Uh, she, so she, we made sure that in every box, yeah, we have like four to five essential items for say the zero to three for the baby, but in every box, there's something for mom as well. Mm-hmm. So there's a gift for mom to treat her because she's, she deserves it too. And it gives her hopefully a bit of just that smile when she gets her box that she's got that special little gift. Um, and prints, motivational prints. We put it, we put prints in there as well. So mm-hmm. they can put in um, just something to keep them happy. But on the side of anything else, um, that's again, coming to the future, we want to start a community on Facebook. Like we've yeah. been slow, like we've been, we're, we're, our biggest challenge as well, obviously, other than marketing is just like where it's just me and Christine right now. Yeah. So we're not at the point where we can hire quite yet. So once we can hire, man, that'd be great to have someone manage the social media and stuff because we, we haven't even started our Facebook group yet. And that's, we know we have to do it. I, 
I've got over 70 episodes on my show. I know this is something I need to do. But again, it's just time, right? Where do you prioritize the time? And sometimes, yeah. but I think the Facebook group will help with that because it's going to be, uh, it's going to have yeah. a community for these moms to go in there and chime together and talk about what they're going through and that kind of thing. But again, that's not something I'm going to be putting together. That, that has to be Christine because it has to be, a, I think, a woman in this case. Yeah, yeah. And that's the nice thing about you guys working together. Are you finding that as a couple, sometimes that can be difficult to run a business together? Are you finding that you're sort of naturally having different roles within the business or has it been difficult to work together? You know what? It's actually gone pretty smooth. So it's been a year Sunday that I'm home um, with her. So I thought for her, the biggest adjustment would have been like having someone else in the house all the time now, other than mm-hmm. the kids. And for me, the adjustment was I've always worked either on a farm with my hands, with commu- like I've always been out of the house. So the um, it's been pretty smooth, actually. Like we ha- we're so different. I'm very um, A type and hands on big picture. She's very B type, I'd say. <laughs> and she's very like, um, she just, she's very detail oriented. She's very, um, we're just so different that our roles are completely different. She takes care of the graphic design, obviously, and all, all the content creation on the mom side of things, yeah. where I, I do a lot of the marketing side of stuff. So, I mean, yeah, we've got kind of perfect roles for yeah. being so different. Yeah, that's great. So in having your podcast, have you had any like huge aha moments through meeting so many different people that are different, doing different subscription boxes um, that you would say was like, I just had no clue until I did this podcast and really got into the subscription box industry. I think two things. Um, number one is that there's so many different backgrounds from the entrepreneurs that I've interviewed. It's, mm-hmm. it's amazing. It's not like I used to think I kind of had this thing where almost self doubt myself because I didn't finish college. I went to that university one and then I dropped out. So I'm a college dropout essentially. Right. And I'm like, <clears throat> what's my, what, who am I? Like, what do I, what's my role here? Because I, I don't have an education. I thought you had to get a business background. You need right. to go to, you know, commerce, something. And I had nothing, but learning that not everyone went to college. You can, mm-hmm. you can learn in so many different ways. Now it can be, um, again, there's a balance between becoming a self-development junkie and applying it to stuff because at some point you do have to apply it. But I think um, the, one of the aha ones that anyone can do this, you just got to really sacrifice something and everyone that's on the show sacrificed something, yeah. uh, whether they had to quit playing maybe sports for a while, maybe they had to delay um, gratification on TV, you know, you don't have to put away the TV because especially if you're working full time, you can't have it all. You want a business, you're unhappy. Well, you're going to have to put something aside to start that thing if you're going to be working. Yeah. And, I, and I think you should keep working until you see at least you have a viable business idea. But even to put that together, I think you have to put some time aside because most of the entrepreneurs, they all started when they're working a job like we did. Yeah. And, you know, it was after work, you're tired. After supper, we put the kids down and we might only have from like 8.30 to 11 before I got to go back to bed. And those yeah. times you just want to sit down, um, have, maybe have a glass of wine and just relax in front of Netflix. Yeah. But we knew we had to get prepared because the 18 months is coming up. Here's my deadline. Yeah. So I think it's just sacrificing that TV time, going back to the office, putting in the work and it's long hours and it's, it's sacrifice. But is it ever worth it in the end when you can, um, when you're doing something for yourself? Mm-hmm. And oh, and the second thing I said is trends. I've learned a lot of trends, like things even from the time. So the, the podcast launched in, in, in April, yeah. April 6th, 2020. And from now, the trends are, are, are crazy. Um, just finding like people are, okay, Facebook ads prices had dropped during COVID. Now they're way back up. So people are right. back to organic things instead. It's just, yeah, it's, um, it's interesting. But those are the two kind of that stick out. Yeah, I know during COVID, when I heard radio stations advertising to advertise on their station, I thought, wow, now we've gotten, you know, (laughs) this is a whole new world again, like all these different things you notice during COVID and how (laughs) things changed, right? Not only like driving through cities when it took half the time, uh, but things like that where, you know, you never hear that, right? There's never a shortage of people looking to advertise. So yeah, it's, it's been interesting to just watch how things have changed. Yeah, it, it, it is. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So besides your community, is there anything else that you're kind of, that you guys are kind of looking at or different angles that you want to explore or different avenues that you want to take your business to through these subscription subscription boxes? Yeah, we want to. Yeah, for sure. So like the, the Facebook community is a big one. Um, 
we, we do want to get back in front of people like through um, conferences and through events, that kind of thing. Right now, it might only be virtual though. So those are, we're looking at virtual events. So like um, Prego Expo, for example, like, again, just to name that one, like those ones are taking virtual. So we're looking at the numbers because I'm part of uh, SUBTA, which is a subscription trade association, and they host amazing online events. And they actually, the next one coming up for, if any one of your listeners out there, like lady entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. uh, this is great for not just, if you, <laughs> regardless if you're starting a subscription box or not, uh, September 24th, it's a free event and it's fantastic. Just uh, Google SUBTA.com, S-U-B-T-A. And they have a free event on September 24th, which is good for business in general, but they, they do it right. So I want to, I'm going to, take in a couple of different Prego Expo virtual events to see how, they're, uh, see how they do it. Yeah. Because sometimes the advertising dollar is not worth it to do it there. And you just got to wait until, until things go in person again. And I think mm-hmm. like third and bird, uh, they're doing some in persons, but it's like half the amount of people. So that's the other challenge. You're yeah. doing all that work again, but for half the amount of the people that are going to be showing up. So yes, yeah, yeah. it's, it's challenging. So right now we're keep evolving. And the next big plan is looking at expansion. So whether it's hiring some help and then, our goal, because right now we have a closed loop after the first year, yeah. going back to that LTV, the lifetime value of our customer, um, with CPA costs, which is your customer acquisition costs being so expensive, we want to maybe open that up to maybe past year one. So yeah. those are the few, those are the big long, uh, long-term plans of Louis and Leia is definitely um, mm-hmm. keeping um, that customer uh, long-term so we can get them through the second, third, fourth year of their childhood up until up until preschool. So yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I know we had done, I can't remember the name of it, but we had done a subscription box for our kids just because we were looking for something a little bit more, right? More educational, because that was really our focus uh, when they were sort of just getting into school. So that sort of that three to five year old, uh, what can we get them? And then, yeah, from there, there was sort of that next age after that of seven to nine or whatever. And so, um, it was the kids loved it. They loved getting their little package in the mail and exploring and seeing what the next <laughs> craft was going to be. And yep. so yeah. I, I don't think it matters if it's us as adults or kids, you know, there's the kid in all of us <laughs> that loves getting these little um, things in the mail. Right. And I think we go full circle, right? We used to get nothing in, or we used to get everything in the mail, the nothing. And now we're starting to see that trend reverse again, where people like to get their packages in the mail. Oh yeah. Like it's exciting. I, people love the unboxings. Like that's why these things are so popular. And yeah. I know if you're, for your listeners who might not know, like the, the scope of subscription boxes, man, there's some crazy um, unboxing videos. Like uh, people go crazy for their, um, when they get their, they look, it's like Christmas. It's yeah. honestly like almost like Christmas um, every month or every quarter, because you're just looking forward to that box coming in for your, your products and stuff. And yeah, yeah. it's just fun. You open up the, bat, that, the box and it's a ton of fun to do no matter how, <laughs> what age you are for sure. Yeah. And there's nothing that's a surprise anymore in this world, right? Everything we, we find out, you know, most people, I think, I don't know the statistics, but most people find out what they're having. They name their child before the child is even born and all these different things. But what do we have that's actually a surprise nowadays? So I think there's something to that too. Yeah, I think so. I think naturally we like that. And then I, we love the surprise. So just to give you an idea, like we had four boys we didn't find out for any of them it just yeah. was that's how much we love the surprise. So, <laughs> and I know we're in the minority when I say that because most people do yeah. definitely uh, find out most, yeah. most of the time. Yeah. That's awesome. So your boxes are gender specific then? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah, absolutely. So one thing we will really strive for is equal friendliness. So like um, we've invested a lot in our boxes themselves, even in the packaging. So um, most of the subscription box people I interview, they just go for the cheapest box and, Fair enough, like because they'll try to get that hit that fifty cent range per box and whatever, mm-hmm. and with print, which is tough, but they do it. We've invested a little bit more in our boxes. Uh, we really want to make sure we're hitting the eco friendly mom. Um, so if you don't care about eco friendliness, um, we're probably not for you. We really like everything is really really well thought out. That's eco friendly mm-hmm. for the baby. Uh, it's natural. Um, it's either made locally or so- sourced Canada, U.S. A lot of the stuff um, with all certifications, those kind of things. And the box itself is made from 100% recycled material. Uh, the ink is made from algae so that it's biodegradable. Wow. Like everything, the packaging is made from 100% uh, recycled fibers. So everything we, literally everything, like our material for the clothes is made from bamboo. Like we really, really put an emphasis on, on being on green, a, a green company. So that's mm-hmm. a huge push for us. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I think there's just too much... Um, crap out there like, no offense to the dollar stores of the world like there there's a need for them because obviously they're they're pretty big but yeah 
um, there's a lot of crap even in subscription boxes, to be honest. Like, it's just like you're getting samples or garbage and um, we did not want to contribute more garbage to the earth. We wanted to right. um, even give something that's quality, um, but also sustainable uh, as, a, as a company. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, and I know that you guys are only going to grow because uh, you've reached massive success in such a short time. So congratulations on that. And I look forward to continuing to follow you guys uh, and your journey with your subscription boxes and where that's going to go. So, Oh, thank you so much, Candice. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah, that's awesome. So if you want to just uh, give us a link of where we can find, first of all, your podcast and um, for people who can't see the video um, and also the, uh, the box itself, if you could just repeat the name. Yeah. So the subscription box is called Louis and Leia. So think of like Louis Vuitton. So L O U I S yep. <laughs> and then, and A N D and Leia think of like, uh, I guess I shouldn't say think of princess Leia. It's spelled differently, but that's how you say it. But it's a, it's actually Louis and Leia. It's French, but it's Leia's L E A. So L O U I S A N D L E A.com um, on Instagram official Louis and Leia. And then for the podcast, uh, regardless if you're into subscription boxes, or you just want to listen to entrepreneurial style podcast. I think uh, you're going to get a kick out of it. Or if you want to look at past guests, there's a lot of boxes you'll recognize there. It's called the subscription box show. So just the subscription box show.com. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, again, um, look forward to connecting in the future. Yeah, this was a blast. Thanks for having me, Candice. Okay. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.